Okay, so this video will be recorded uh, every single week we do this. So again, welcome back if you guys are regulars and if you're new. Um, again, my name is Amy and this is my husband, We We are the founder of Women Sellers and we have been selling on Amazon for almost six years now. And so we kind of tried every single thing it has to do with Amazon. Hi, Marty. Marty is saying, hey, hey, on Facebook. Um, hey, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> so we tried, we started out with uh, retail arbitrage, which is just going into retail stores, finding things on clearance, or going to thrift stores and find things at deep discount, reselling it on Amazon. That was the first thing that we did, and it did really well. It got us started on Amazon, and we were, we were hooked pretty much. And then we transitioned into private label, which was really fun too, because we learned so much about Amazon that a lot of people have no idea, you know, how to get started and it's intimidated by it. We just kind of dive right in and did the whole private label thing. Um, we bought like 500 units when we first started out and we also invested a lot of money too. So private label, you kind of have to do everything. You have to create the listing, you have to buy a UPC code, you have to make your own images and description and features and description and all that good stuff. Um, so we did that and then it went okay, but then afterwards we found out that there's another subset of retail arbitrage called Replen. And that's what we're doing. So replen just stands for replenishable. And it's just any items that sells over and over again. Um, and we use the Keepa graph to tell us whether or not this is a good item and how the prices has been over the years and the months. And then we make our buying decisions based on that. So we do everything by data. And the, the key difference between what we do with replan versus what we did before with retail arb is that we buy stuff at full price so we're not waiting for stuff to go in clearance we're not you know sifting it through um thrift store aisles so it's stuff that you can buy full price meaning that you can always go back you don't have to wait for a sale or discount codes or coupons you can always go back and get more of it yeah so it makes our business a lot easier to predict in terms of income and how much revenue we're going to be expecting month after month. And so we really like that aspect of replan. And a lot of people have questions about like, how does replan work? How does one buy a product at full price and able to resell it for profit on Amazon? Like, why would people do that? And the short answer is that there's just different part of the country that we live in that we're able to purchase certain items that maybe you can't where you're living. And so you're used to just buying everything on Amazon and Amazon offers it at a certain price that you're happy with. And in that process, we all benefit and you're able to get your product in two days, prime shipping. And we that's how we've been doing it. We just find these kind of hidden gems and just keep on replenishing it. And that's how Replen pretty much works because people trust Amazon. They, you know, they rely on the products there to be delivered to them in a couple of days. And so people are willing to pay a little bit of a premium, whether or not they know it or not, they're happy with the price. And we are, you know, able to build our business. A lot of people do this model and the way that it works and how we are able to replenish our products and find new products is what I'm going to talk about in detail in this um, chat. And I have a bunch of products here that I kind of want to give you guys as examples and sort of how I pick them or these are just examples, okay? So they're not like real replen, but it, in terms of like how I source the items and the all the data that I looked at in Keepa is really important for when you are out in like a store and you're trying to find new replenishable products. So I think we're going to dive right in. Yeah, well, before, before we get started, I just want to let everybody know that I'll be moderating the chat in Zoom. So anybody that's joining us there, feel free to post your questions. I'm going to um, read them wow. and then bring them up and try to help answer them. Or we'll try to help answer them. Yeah. And uh, same thing with Zoom. So I mean, I'm sorry, Facebook. So please feel free to write a comment there and we'll try to um, answer questions as they come up. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to answer questions on Facebook while he does the Zoom. Um, I used to do this by myself, guys. And then after we're doing it and you saw how much fun we have, 
he joined in. At first, it was just me and um, sometimes my sister Cecilia, or she's also like to be called Cece, she would jump in and help with any questions about prepping and packing and FDA shipments. And then I would ask him a bunch of questions about like bookkeeping, um, LLC, sales tax, all that stuff while he's just sitting there. And then eventually we're like, why don't we just join us? So that's why we both do it now so that if you guys have a questions about like the back end of the business, he'll be here to um, help you answer. And while we're at that, I actually wrote down some questions that people have in the group um, and also like people who are emailing me separately and messaging messaging me. These are the questions that kind of comes up a lot. And so I think I'm gonna start out with finding higher profitable items. This is something that I think a lot of people struggle with, especially in the beginning, because you can find things that are profitable for like $1, $2. And if you have a lot of money to start out with, or you just want to test the system to see if it works and, you know, kind of test the waters, then yeah, $1, $2, at least you're not like losing money, then you can definitely go for those products. Um, we have products like that, right? We make like a couple bucks in the beginning. Yeah. And actually up until recently, we still had a few of those products laying or I mean, um, yeah, a few of those listings laying around that, or what I would call like, you know, very close to break even type of pricing. Um, and there's certainly nothing wrong with it, um, especially when you're starting out. Uh, however, as you kind of scale your business and you start to reach a point where you quickly run out of money to buy stuff, because uh, we like to say that Amazon is a very hungry beast and you have to keep on feeding the beast, right? The more products you sell, you want to quickly take that money and then you want to buy more products, keep on shipping into Amazon. Well, you'll find that, you know, if you are sourcing as quickly as we do, you quickly max out on those, you know, uh, debit cards and you Gosh. use credit cards and then we max out on that too. So at that point, once you start to reach that ceiling, you're going to want to kind of be a little bit more discerning with how much money you make. So we've kind of raised that now to like a minimum of like three dollars um, for for most products. Some products are just very simple; they don't require like much prepping or any prepping at all. We'll you know maybe go down to like a dollar fifty, two dollars. But also you have to think about like besides calculating the uh, the profit margins on it, you know you have to think about the overhead, the time it takes to kind of get these items and ship into Amazon. So that dollar profit could quickly dilute itself down to like, you know, break even. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So just, you know, just keep that in mind as you're growing your business. Yeah. So how do you find profit, higher profitable items? Right. So at first we were kind of looking at things that on Amazon, the price was around $15 and that's still our average, but now we're trying to find items that sell higher, like $30, 20, 30, 40, even $50 sometimes. And with that, we know that we're going to take home a bigger profit margin. Am I saying that right? Yeah, right. profit margin okay. or ROI. Those ROI. are both basically calculations you can quickly do to see you know, how much money you could be making um, off of how much you purchase the item for, which is ROI, mm -hmm. and also versus how much the item sells for, which is profit margin. Yeah, so you want to look for items that sell a little bit higher, but with that, the caveat is that you might need to spend a little bit more. So if you don't have um, a huge cash flow to to work with in the beginning, then maybe you can try the smaller items just to, to, to validate that it actually works, right? But if you do have a little bit money to play around with, then spend a little bit of the, uh, the, your money on the higher ticketed items. I don't want to you know tell you to go out and spend some $100 to make $100. But if you can spend maybe $20 to make like $10, $15, it's more worth your time because then you would have that will kind of equate to three or four smaller items, right? So usually if you if you just like our minimum right now is $3 profit, like we don't go for the lower profit anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, $15 profit equates to five, $3 profit, profitable items. And uh, if, even if it only sells like a few times a month, it's still worth it for us. It's, but we have to know, like we have to look at our numbers really well in order to determine that this is a good buy and we're, we're willing to take the chance. And uh, it doesn't have to sell like a thousand units a month. Again, it only has to sell a few times, but if it's going to yield us a higher profit, then we're willing to take that chance. Um, calculated risk, right? You have to make sure you're looking at all your data and um, of course, you know, Keepa is what we look at 100% of the time. Like we never make any buying decisions without looking at Keepa. 
So with that, let me go on. Oh, I forgot to wish everybody um, <clears throat> happy Holy Week. Um, we are Catholic, so um, I hope you all are having you know a really good week. And Easter is coming up on Sunday, so I want to wish everybody happy early Easter as well. Our kids are going to be going to our my brother's house to do um, egg picking. Is that a thing? Egg hunting. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're really looking Easter forward hunting. to it, Easter egg hunting. So uh, with that being said, let me give you some examples of things that I just picked up um, from the store. So these things, let me see if you guys can see. So they're baby items. Um, we have three kids, so I have a lot of baby stuff. Um, half of my examples here are baby items. So these things are little yogurt bites and um, this is an example of an item that is probably a low buy, but if you combine them together, sometimes if you bundle things together, the price is higher and it makes it worthwhile for you to um, invest in this product because you can yield a higher profit, right? So what I'm going to do to kind of walk you through the process of researching this product is let me make sure we don't have any comments so far. Okay, so if anybody have your Amazon seller app, you would go to um, add a product. Okay, so there, what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna type in um, beach yogurt melty. So there we go, beach yogurt melties. So last week we talked about if we do keyword research, there's going to be a lot more um, listings that pop up versus if you just scan the product. Like right now, if I scan this product by scanning the barcode, I think I'm probably only getting like two or three listings. But when I type it in, I have a lot more um, options to choose from. So right now I see, what is that? So this is the strawberry apple and yogurt. And right now, this one is actually by itself. So this one is sold by itself, um, not as a bundle with this one. So this was the sweet potato, right? So if you guys are following along, it's just the first one that says variation, beach nut yogurt melties. And I'm going to choose the second one because that's the right product. It's the one with the strawberry. I'm just kidding, that's the apple. All right, so this one is not even available right now. So I'm gonna actually go with this one. This is the sweet potato mango and yogurt. And that one is selling for $28.99 for a pack of seven. I don't know how much I bought. I think I bought it for $1.50 because it was on sale. So uh, $1.50 times seven, how much is that? Say roughly about like $10. Yeah, let's say roughly $10. So this is the, the example that I have guys, okay? All right, so I'm just going to put in here, I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna give me an option to put in the cost of this item. My phone is really slow. Um, so you wanna make sure you're looking at Amazon Fulfilled if you wanna do FBA. And right here, I'm gonna put in the cost of this item, roughly $10. So with $10, I'm gonna make $18.81, which is a pretty healthy mm, profit. Very good. But the thing is that this one was 50% off. So I really didn't, you know, normally it would cost me $3. So three times uh, seven is actually $21. So even at $21, I'm making $7, almost $8 off of this. So that's uh, what, 40, 30, 40%. 30, 30, 30 to 40, yeah, yeah. 30% ROI. So, so it's not so a bad. So ROI is basically the net profit divided by um, how much you bought it for. So in this case, if we're going to take a, a profit about $7 divided by 21, that's 30%. So 30% ROI. So different people will have different minimums when it comes to how much they want to make. Now, personally for us, 35% is the minimum. So 30%, you know, I mean, we're, we're willing to kind of fudge it a little bit and kind of sneak that type of product in there. Um, but you'll find that products can be as high as like hundred, even more. Mm -hmm. Um, so meaning that if you buy 
uh, seven of, if you buy like seven of these, at a at, discount price. So, so, so for example, you buy 70, seven of these at $21 total. And after all the fees and everything, you make $21 also. So that's 100% ROI. 100% um, ROI is, is very good. It's, um, it's a little bit harder to kind of achieve those for a lot of products, but they are out there. Yeah. So if you are at Bye Bye Baby, these are on sale and you can probably find them um, sitting in the clearance aisle if you want. But we, so this is an example. I didn't even think this was a replenishable product, but it, it could be. So it's, a, it's an example that replens is everywhere. And I know a lot of people have a hard time finding replen. And um, that's where the, the product pods comes in. Product finder pod. You always make fun of me when I call it the product finds pod. It's a little bit hard to say, but it's just a group where if you don't have time to go out and find these items by yourself, um, I help you find the products. And we just, you know, it's all OA, so it's online arbitrage items. And it's it's a month to month subscription. So if you guys just want to try it out, um, let me know. I am full right now, but I'm thinking about opening up another pod soon. So if you have any interest, then I only open it up if there's enough interest. And so um, if you have any interest in it, let me know and I will send you some information. So where were we? So I was talking about this product as being um, a higher profitable product, right? Something that yields at least, this one is like almost $8 profit. And um, let's see, if you wanted to do like a bundle, you can create your own listing and do a bundle. But for us, we don't create our own listings. We really just jump on other listing that's already existing on Amazon. So that's why we really, um, th this works for us because we don't have to spend too many times like buying UPC codes, creating new listings and um, worrying about pictures and descriptions and all that good stuff so and we, most importantly you don't have to pay for ppc these yeah these listings are already ranked you're just kind of jumping on it right so you're not you're not like hoping that it took me pour more money to try to get it up there you're also not worrying about reviews you know these products a lot of these times these listings have like hundreds if not thousands of reviews because they are like you know top branded products like they're not private label products that you have to really try to push up there. They're already up there. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's stuff that people are already looking to sell. So you don't have to worry about promoting the product pretty much. So uh, with that, I think that's the, the one of the examples that I have. Let's see if I have another one. And uh, we actually have a question um, yeah. from Lisa. So she's asking, if you're brand new, what would be the first way to get started trying to list and sell items? Can you talk about gating and how to get ungated in the category? So I was thinking that this is probably going to be a grocery yeah. item, right? Which is gated mm -hmm. for most new sellers. Yeah. So you want to talk about how possibly to get ungated for groceries? Yeah, we can go through that. So to get ungated in groceries, we always recommend Frontier Co-op uh, Wholesale. So with, when you purchase something from there, they're going to issue you a invoice and you can use the invoice to get ungated on Amazon. So what what Amazon requires is that you need to buy at least 10 units of the same item in order to get ungated. So let's say Frontier Co-op offers the um, beach yogurt Mounties. If you buy 10 of these and then Frontier Co-op gives you that invoice, then you can use that invoice to get ungated in groceries. So, and um, just to be clear, there's a consumer site and then there's the like the wholesale. wholesale site. Yeah. So do not buy from the consumer site. Make sure you're on the wholesale site. Yeah, correct. Right? Yeah, because we made that mistake before. <laughs> I keep on submitting the receipt, and Amazon keep yeah, on. Yeah. So as a consumer, it. when you buy something, you get a receipt. As a retailer, when you buy something wholesale, you get a invoice. So invoice is what Amazon wants to see, not receipts. Yeah. Uh, Lisa is asking, is there any other way to get ungated than Frontier? Uh, in which category, Lisa? Because Frontier is usually for topicals, groceries. Um, you can also use Entertainment Earth for... So she's asking for groceries. Oh, for groceries. Oh, yeah. Frontier Co-op is the, the best way. Um, I don't know if any other places that... Oh, you know what? Websteron.com also has groceries on there. Mm -hmm. And Amazon will accept that. So I've, I've heard other people said. So Websteron.com is the other... Yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll link both of them. So give me a second here. Just kind of confirm the URL and I'll link it to Zoom. 
system. So Amazon will accept if you're trying to get engaged in groceries and you don't want to go the Frontier Co-op route, you can try web webstaurant.com. It's web webstaurantstore.com. Oh. So. Um, Lisa has another follow-up question. Would you recommend starting groceries to start? If you can, yeah. If you're already ungated in groceries or... Um, well, I think she's asking if she's going to get ungated in a category, should groceries be the one that she should focus on first? Yes. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because for us, when we for, when we got ungated in groceries, it opened up so many doors for you know expanding our products. And so, yeah, groceries is, is huge and it changed out like half of our products now are groceries. So yeah, I would definitely recommend getting ungated there first. Uh, so Heidi has a question about the product finds pod. Um, mm -hmm. She's asking, how do you guys find the products in your pod? Do you have a secret to finding these products? <laughs> <laughs> so, <Wow. laughs> well, I don't really have a secret. So the thing is at first, this was a service that came out of a need in the community. And it was just another lady asking me like, can I find products for her? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I was, I was finding products for a really small group, like, you know, five to 10 people. And then it got to the point where I couldn't do it myself anymore. So now we do have, I have assistant helping me find products, but it doesn't get to the pods before I look at them. So I'm always like the last check, um, like the verified part. And um, that's how we're able to find like a lot of products for multiple pods. So yeah, yeah. what I would say is that, um, you know, it's not a secret in the sense that we will literally teach you how to do this. And we actually, uh, Amy actually put together a great course for that. I'll link it in a second. And the course will take you step by step on how to, how to do all these things. What the, the product finds pod does is it's for people that, you know, are a little bit short on time, but want to kickstart their business or, you know, let's be honest, they just want to kind of have a little cheat code, right? So I'm, I'm a video gamer. So for me, I put in a cheat code to get 30 lives or jump to, to the next level. Well, this is your cheat code to kind of getting products delivered to you on a daily basis, right? And you can go ahead and just kind of start buying it, putting it on Amazon and start making money. So you don't have to go through, you know, the arduous process of learning how to, you know, read keepographs and all this stuff. Amy, she's a pro. She's going <laughs> to basically hand it to you. I never thought I was a pro or anything, but I guess I, I, I love finding products. Like that's what used to be one of the things that I do for our business, like all the time, yeah. but now we have people helping us. It's, it's helping us to scale our business and well, grow. A lot anything faster. you do for a living, you're considered a pro. So I would okay. consider you a pro. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Moyen is asking for the product finds pod. What's your average ROI? Also are the pods limited to a certain number of members? Yes, so the minimum ROI is 40%. Um, average is about 80%, I would say. Some are more, some are less. So that's the, the average ROI. And it's limited to 10 people. Yeah, so each pod only has 10 members. And I do that purposely because I don't want to tank the price of the product. So each pod only has 10. And if you are ungated in groceries, toys, beauty, and all that stuff, then you can do the, the advanced pod, which gives you more products and more, um, more products in ungated categories. If you are a beginner, um, you would do the beginner's pod where you, you're pretty much gated in everything. I don't have any space open for beginner's pod right now. Um, but if you message me, I can, or say you're interested, then I can um, put you on the wait list for when a spot opens up. There's actually a pretty long waiting list for that right now, though. But we're trying what we can, and yeah. Yeah, and you know, if you know, you don't have to take our word uh, for it. Um, you know, in the Women Sellers Facebook group, you'll find testimonials um, from people that we didn't ask them to, to post. You know, they just love the pods and they just find it a great service and a great value, and they will post their testimonials on there. So yeah. feel free to ask around. Um, you know, certainly don't take our word for it. Okay, so I actually want to go to a question that somebody else had. This was like a individual question. Can you actually go over this? It's the FBM templates. Sure. So FBM, so we all know about FBA, right? Fulfilled Fulfillment by Amazon. That's the process where we will ship all the products into an Amazon warehouse. And then when a customer buys it, Amazon does all the packing and shipping. They handle the, handle the customer service, the returns. They handle all that for you. But they do charge a fee for it. It's roughly about 40% of, um, of how much it, the product sells for is the total fee. FBM, which is fulfillment by merchant, 
think of it more as eBay style of selling where some you list a product that you have in your own home or your own warehouse, wherever you store it, it's in your possession. And somebody buys it, you are the one responsible for packing it up and then shipping it out to them. Uh, the fees there are roughly about 15%. Um, that's the Amazon referral fee. So you're like, okay, well, 15 versus 40%, gee, I mean, why would anybody do FBA? Well, you have to also have to keep in mind that to ship it to your customers, you have to pay UPS, FedEx, or USPS, which I do not recommend, by the way, to, to get the products there. Um, and if you're not in a centrally located part of the country like we are, we're located in Maryland, so we're on the East Coast. If somebody in New York or Philly or Virginia buys it from us, okay, that's pretty manageable. It's not too expensive. However, once you get start getting to Texas, to Nevada, and then California, that's where your profit margins get eaten up really, really quickly. And you don't have that differences in terms of fee fluctuation with FBA because Amazon has warehouses all over the country and they can, sh they can ship it to these people two days because they're located everywhere. So you don't have the, um, the differences in terms of like the shipping prices. Um, so getting back to the question itself is how to create a template for it. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of do this from the top of my head. Actually, you know what, let me, let me bring up Seller Central on my computer and rather than kind of uh, guessing all, all the navigation items. Uh, okay, so when you have Amazon Seller Central open, you're gonna to wanna to go to the top right corner, settings, hover over it, and then you're gonna to go to shipping settings. And then that's where you're gonna create your templates. And you're gonna see a button that says create a new shipping template. So I'm not gonna to get too deep into this, but this is where you create shipping templates to be able to determine how much you're gonna charge a customer. Uh, to keep things very simple, especially if you're just starting out, just go ahead and just offer free shipping. And as we know, as sellers, there is no such thing as free shipping because somebody has to pay to get the item from A to B. And that's gonna be us, the seller. So even though you're doing free shipping, you're gonna to want to basically consider how much it costs to ship things on average in the price that you set the item for, right? So for example, let's go back to this here because I just have this handy, right? So we bought this for a dollar and um, we, it's a pretty lightweight item. So let's just say, for the sake of this discussion, it's gonna cost us about $5 to ship it, right? So if I priced it for, let's say um, $10. So after Amazon takes out a dollar, 15% of that, which is gonna be $1.50, so now we're down to $8.50. Another dollar to actually have purchased the item from Bye Bye Baby, so now we're down to $7.50. And then $5 to ship it, so now that profit, the net profit becomes $2.50. So $2.50 on an item that only costed me a dollar is, 250% ROI. That's actually excellent. And, you know, probably not likely, but in, in the case of this example, that's what the numbers are. That's what, if you're using USPS or? Uh, again, just for the sake of this discussion, you know, I mean, uh, UPS usually charges more than $5, but just for the sake of it, mm -hmm. um, because I am pricing this for free, I kind of raised the price up to $10 just to make sure that I have enough cushion in there to pay for the shipping later on. So make sure you do all your calculations carefully because once you list it and people start buying it and you realize that you price it for too little and you start losing money on shipping, you know, you're know you kind of stuck with fulfilling those orders. Technically you can cancel it, but Amazon frowns on that immensely and you should never cancel an order unless you have no other choice. Yeah, um, yeah so that's, that's the basic gist of it. Um, yeah, so just go there, create free shipping templates and you're on your way. All right, so the... We have a question real quick in Zoom. Um, Laura asks, if I live near a fulfillment center, are we able to take our products to them instead? So mm -hmm. I already answered Laura, but the answer is no. Yeah, yeah. so this question has come up a lot. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have, uh, so well, funny enough, you know, here in Maryland, I think there's a fulfillment center in like Baltimore, um, but we actually never actually ship to, to Baltimore. We always end up shipping to Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So maybe Pennsylvania is more of a hub for Amazon. Um, at the end of the day, even if you were, to get lucky enough to be able to get a fulfillment center that is, it could be like next door to you. Amazon does not allow that because they want you to be able to track the item. And when you drop it off on your own, you are not a bona fide shipping company with tracking numbers. So you still have to go through something like UPS. Jeanette saying hi, she's in the car. 
Hi, Jeanette. Jeanette. <laughs> um, so actually, before we lose um, Mabel's question, because she was above Laura. So Mabel's asking, once we start, what's a realistic time before we start seeing profits? And what would be a reasonable, attainable profit amount? Just trying to get my expectations realistic. Seeing profits. OK, so usually if you find the right replenishable products and all the numbers checked out, you, you will see profit as soon as it hits the Amazon warehouse, sometimes even like the same day. Sometimes you can even see profits even before it's available for sale. Yeah. And let's say you're investing what $200 to get started, Mabel, and you want to make back that $200. So the, the first thing is that you have to make sure all the items are checked into Amazon. Sometimes the items go to different fulfillment centers and it can take a little bit longer. So on average, you will probably see a return within what I would say like two weeks. Yeah, no, no sooner than two weeks. Two so weeks. give it about a week to reach the fulfillment center and then give it about another week for Amazon to um, basically start to unpack your box and start to um, increase your inventory numbers. So, um, but what Amy was alluding to earlier is that Amazon does have a pre-sell um, system where they know that you ship something in and they trust you and they believe that you are truly shipping it in because they can track it. They will actually start to sell the item. And then, so, so sometimes you'll see an item prime, for example, right? When you're buying on Amazon, it's prime, but then the delivery date is not until like a month later. So you're scratching your head, like, how is that prime? Well, keep in mind, prime means two day shipping from when the, the time it leaves Amazon warehouse. It doesn't mean that it's gonna get to you in two days from when you click the checkout button, right? So prime is a shipping, not the actual whole fulfillment time frame. So when you see something that's that's like, not going to be delivered for a month. Likely that's going to be an FBA, an FBA seller like us that is shipping it in. And Amazon's like, well, we're not going to be able to get, get around to this maybe for another few weeks, but just to set the expectations for the customers. So that way we're kind of underselling, but over delivering, we're going to tell them that this won't be delivered for another month. M more likely the item's going to be maybe delivered in like a week. And, but the customer's happy, right? Because they're like, oh, I didn't really expect to have this for another month, but it's coming next week. Awesome. Okay, so Lisa asked, um, so if we're buying grocery items, how do we get them to the fulfillment center, UPS or FedEx? So Lisa, if you're going to do a uh, shipment plan with FBA, um, FBA again is fulfilled by Amazon, they're going to usually um, have UPS do their, as their preferred carrier. And the process to do a shipment plan, um, First, you need, you need to do have a, an account, right? If you have a seller account, and then if you have your, um, your Amazon seller app to do your research, then you're about like 50% there. And then once you have all of your items already, you've sourced your products and you're ready to ship them out to Amazon, then you're going to put them all in one box or two or three, whichever, whichever. if you have a lot of items, you might need multiple boxes. But the minimum usually is like 50 units to make it worth your while. So you're gonna ship all these items in this one box. And then when you have already told Amazon the items, the units and everything that's going to be in the shipment plan, Amazon's gonna going to generate a shipment label for you. And that shipping label is going to tell them where it's gonna go and which both Fulman Center is going to go to. Um, for us, we're in the East Coast, and ours goes to Hazleton, Pennsylvania, a lot, and that's one of that's a, one of the closest ones. So that's why we see sales almost immediately if Amazon unpacks it, receives it, and check it in, um, because they I think they know after a while um, what we're going to send in because we send in usually the same things like over and over again. So uh, they usually you know know exactly where the, the items are going to go to so that they can distribute across the country. And one thing, important thing to keep in mind is that you can actually um, set your inbound shipping settings to say whether you want to ship it everything to one warehouse and then let Amazon distribute it to all their different warehouses at, for a fee. Or you can say, well, I don't want to pay that fee. I just want to be able to ship directly to those warehouses. So in our Pennsylvania example, right? If we were have to have the setting that we want Amazon to do the inventory placement, then everything is just, just gonna be shipped to PA. However, if we said, well, let's go ahead and ship it across the country. Um, Amazon is gonna say, okay, well, here's your shipment plan. Uh, one shipment is gonna go to PA. Another shipment is gonna go to Illinois and then another one's gonna go to like Texas. That way you, 
it's, it's, it's on you to distribute it to across the different warehouses. Keep in mind now that you have three different shipments, you're gonna have basically three different boxes and you're gonna have to pay for three different um, shipments to those three warehouses. So uh, just kind of think about what makes the sense most sense for you. I, I think the, what makes sense for us is that if you have like a lot of items, then you don't mind kind of shipping it to three different warehouses, right? Yeah. But if you only have like a handful of items, you know, maybe like less than 50, then you really want to ship it to just like one warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually if the items are, if we put it in the box and it is like 50 pounds, it maximizes the, the shipping rates because Amazon, I don't know how they're able to get like excellent rates with UPS. And so we always try to put like 50 pounds in one box and it turns out to be about 40 cents per pound that we're shipping out. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's very discount. affordable. I, sh I shipped about 400 pounds worth of product and it only cost it like $75. Yeah, it's crazy. Using UPS. So, um, so real quick, Tracy's asking, what setting is that? I always do my shipment in inventory lab and most of the time it will go to one or two fulfillment centers, but then my products end up in fulfillment center uh, transfer status for what seems like forever. So Tracy, uh, from Amazon Seller Central, you're gonna wanna hover over the upper right corner under settings, go all the way down to the last option, which is fulfillment by Amazon. And then in the second box, you're gonna see inbound settings. And the first thing you're gonna see is inventory placement option. So you're gonna click edit on there and then you are given two options. The default setting is distributed inventory placement. So that again is where um, Amazon will go ahead and determine that they want you to send it to three different warehouses. You can override that default setting by choosing inventory placement service, which means that most likely you're just gonna be sending to one warehouse and then they're gonna distribute it to multiple warehouses, which is probably Tracy, I'm guessing what you have your setting on, which is why the fulfillment uh, center transfer is taking so long uh, because you only send to one warehouse and then they have to send it to a bunch of other ones. Um, we've also had the case where we have set ourselves to be distributed inventory placement. Um, I'm sorry, inventory placement service. And then Amazon tells us to go ahead and just send it to one warehouse anyway. So, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, we don't understand how everything works behind the scenes there, but take a look at those settings and kind of decide on, you know, what works best for you and um, the amount of shipment that you're, you're sending in. Okay. So getting back to today's topic of how to get started on Amazon. So if you guys are brand new, the number one thing you have to do is get your account verified with Amazon. You won't be able to do anything if you don't have that account yet. So if you are um, in the middle of doing that and you want to get started, you can start looking at things that in the, in your stores around your house, you know, things you can sell, or you can start building up some cash by reselling some of the things that you have at home already. A lot of people just start out with a few hundred dollars. If you have more to invest, you're going to grow faster, but we always recommend putting everything back into your business so that you can grow faster. Um, that's what we did. We didn't take out a salary for like a whole year and we put everything back into the business. Even now we don't even take out like all the profits. We, we just take out what we need to live and then the rest goes back into the business. So so that's number one, you need to have the Amazon seller account. And then the second thing is that you need to download the Amazon seller app. So that app is on both Android and on the iPhone, Apple, Apple iPhone. And you're able to use that app to scan things or type things in using keyword research at the store. So without the app, it's gonna be very hard for you to do product research. Um, people have used Scoutify. I think Scoutify is the other app. Scoutify is you. a app made by Inventory Lab. Um, so if you have an Inventory Lab subscription, you get free access to Scoutify. Yeah. Um, some people use that app and I've never used it. I've always just used Amazon because it was free and uh, that works just fine. I'm able to um, find out the profit, just like the example that I shared earlier. And, and then the last thing is Keepa. You, you need Keepa, guys, because without that, you're not going to be able to know, you know, if this item is going to sell tomorrow or before. You need to, oh, so Billy actually asked a question, do you only use Amazon seller app in Keepa? And the answer is yes, um, for ROA. So for retail arbitrage, that that's the only thing you, you need. Um, for online arbitrage, you actually 
you, you're okay with just Keepa and Amazon, but we use an um, on-screen calculator like RevSeller to make things a little bit faster when I'm doing product research. Um, we also use Helium 10. Um, and, and Keepa, there's a free version, but it doesn't really do much for you, right? Yeah. Like it, it's the paid version that you really want to to really subscribe to. Yeah, so Lisa asked, is it paid? Yeah, so yeah. Keepa is a paid version and it's $17 a month. Um, it's German based. So when you check out, it's gonna be in Euro, but it transferred to about 17, $18 in the US. And I think it's, it's absolutely worth it um, because it saves us like a lot more than $18 a, a month when we have that. So um, Mabel, the calculator I was talking about is Rev Seller. Yeah, I, I'll link it in the Zoom. Yeah, so, so it's a Chrome extension. Yeah, it's a Chrome extension and uh, it helps us to do product research online. So if you're doing it in store, then you don't need the Chrome extension. You just need the seller app and the Kiba. So when I do online arbitrage, I, I really like, um, you know, all these apps. Helium is, you know, maybe Helium tells you the number of sales per month. You can use Kiba for that because every drop in rank is a, a sale. It equates to a sale. It doesn't always um, necessarily mean a sale because at some point when the, the the seller or the item is selling a lot, Keepa actually stopped dropping and it just has like a line. And sometimes it will say like there's zero sale, but it's actually a lot. And Helium 10 will tell you that data. And some people use Jungle Scout as well. Yeah, I was just gonna make a comment about like drops in ranking. So when you look at the Helium, um, I'm sorry, the Keepa graph, you're gonna see like drops, right? So um, it looks like a drop on the graph, but in the case of ranking, it's actually rising in the ranking, right? So when you think about ranking, you wanna be number one, right? You always hear like sports teams, we're number one. So that's the, the top of the ranking. So mm -hmm. dropping in ranking doesn't mean that it drops from number one to number 100, it just means it drops in the graph. So it could be rising from, the 100th ranked product to the first ranked product. So that's actually a rise in ranking, but a drop in the graph, if that makes sense. The graph is upside down. Can you explain why? <laughs> yeah, so the, the idea of ranking becomes kind of weird because you know whenever you're looking at profits and business, you always want bigger numbers, right? But ranking, we actually want smaller numbers. Um, and you know, I'm a sports fan and I think of like, college football or college basketball rankings, you always, you always want to be the number one team, right? And that's ranking. You don't want to be the 100 ranked team because that means you're last if there's 100 teams. You want to be the number one team. So think of ranking as you want to be number one. <laughs> so, yeah. and that's a same, the same goes with these products. You want the products to have a higher ranking number, meaning that they want to be closer to the number one because the number one product will be the fastest selling product. You know, maybe the most profitable. You know, it's the best product for that category. Yeah, I always love that sports analogy because I don't understand it, but it makes sense. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, maybe we'll say it agrees with you. So uh, that's the the like the bare minimum for getting started. You don't need a lot of fancy things to to get started. I promise you. We we started with just a few hundred dollars and um, just those simple apps. At first, I didn't have Kiva, and I regret it because I bought like twenty of these. Uh, shampoo things and they weren't selling because keep um i'm sorry amazon when you're looking at the app and you see that rank it's only that rank for that moment in time so it doesn't tell the whole story but keepa will tell you how it did in the in the past and uh, predict how it will do in the future and so that's why you really need this service and you need to understand how to read the graphs as well so that you can make good buying decision and you know not lose money like we did um, but even when you do like for us even if we do lose money we didn't like have to lose you know thousands of dollars like at most each time we only try to test products that within like three to five units if it's a new product for us so we don't have to invest a whole bunch of money um, and I don't want to bash on private label, but when you're doing a private label product, you have to buy a lot of inventory, right? Like sometimes even hundreds of or thousands MOQ or the minimum order quantity, even before they would talk to you. So with Replan, you really can only, you know, 
lose like maybe five units. Um, and, and if that's the case and it doesn't sell anymore, just get it returned back to you and then re return it to the store. Or if you can't do that, discount it so it sells. So you don't even have to worry about you know returning it to the store and either make back your money or lose a little bit. But it's all part of doing business. So if you guys think that you know you can go in at this and I don't want to say come out losing nothing, then it's not realistic because you know this is business and you really have to treat it as such because if you don't and you think it's just like a side hustle or like an overnight success which a lot of people make it out to be then you're going to be really disappointed because a lot of like those shiny people on youtube or um, a lot of different facebook groups says that you can make you can be like an overnight millionaire that only happens for like one out of like thousands or you know many many people. So um, you have to really put in the work and understand the system and just trust it. Even when it doesn't work, even when you think that you're not making any sales or it's broken, you know we, we love this one graph, the entrepreneurial graph, where some yeah. days it's great, <laughs> some days it's not so great. But it's like a roller coaster. But as long as it's still trending upward, that's all we worry about. So now we don't look at just one week data or even one month, we look at how do we do this quarter or how do we do last year or how we do this year compared to last year. So you have to look at the big picture. So as long as you're still increasing in revenue or growing, then that's all that matters. That's all that matters, right? And, it, and it's natural to even um, as experience and how long we've been doing this for when, you, when we have a bad day, then we just, we're just like really bummed, right? It, it, it's, yeah. it's just natural, right? And then I have to pinch myself, remind me myself, okay, look at the big picture, you know, like we've done well for like a week and then we had one bad day. This is not the end of the world, right? Mm -hmm. But it's natural, right? You're just like, like wondering, oh, like, well, why aren't people buying today? You know, and there could be a, a thousand different reasons, none of which you can correct that day anyway, right? So just um, push forward, tomorrow's a new day. Sure enough, you know, our sales bounce back the next day, right? Yeah. Um, and and also that's why the woman sellers group is here to kind of support you, you know, yeah. like when, when you're feeling unsure or you're hesitant or you're just scared to start, we, we hear that a lot, you know, your fellow sellers are going to be here. We all started in the same place that you did, right? Everybody started like the first step registering for an Amazon account and then going out from there. Right. So we've all been there and we all know the struggles. And, um, you know, we're, we're proof, proof positive that, you know, if you treat it like a business and you're serious at it, you can really make it work. Yeah. And I love seeing those um, updates from all of you guys. I, I go through them every single day and I, I love seeing like how everyone is, you know, supportive of each other when you're having a bad day or people are selling their celebrating their wins because everybody's there to celebrate with you. Even if it's a small win, like you make your first sale. I see that a lot and people, you know, come there and they congratulate and you don't, you just don't know when you're going to be able to make a difference in somebody else's life. Like maybe they don't, they didn't comment or like what you post, but because of that post, they're out taking action and actually, you know, working on this business because they saw that. So you never know when you're going to make an impact. So, so I just wanted to kind of take a quick break here and just kind of welcome people that have been joining. We've been getting people over the last uh, hour or so. Um, and uh, I think Anita was asking whether this is being recorded and the answer is yes, it's going to be recorded and you'll be posting it to the group. Hopefully tomorrow. Okay. So <laughs> for the people that didn't join us at the top of the hour, you can definitely see everything. So you can go back and we'll even have like the Zoom chats and the answers to all the questions, whether it's in the chat or whether it's on mic. Um, so yeah, don't worry. You'll be able to see the whole thing. Yeah. And also if you got on here late, just remember we do this on a weekly basis and it's kind of this general format, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of questions. So we don't, we don't mind answering the same questions over and over again because we know that um, we've been adding a lot of new members to the Women's Sellers Group and we know that a lot of people are anxious to get their questions answered and get started. So we don't mind kind of going over the same things over and over again, just because we're so excited for the new people to get started. Yeah, and it's also on Facebook too. So it's Facebook Live if you guys can't join on Zoom. Um, so you also can see, but if you wanna see the chat on Zoom, then that will be posted with the, um, the replay on YouTube, but I'll post that tomorrow, hopefully. 
Um, Billy has a question. How long does Amazon store your inventory before they charge you storage fee? And what do you do with the item that doesn't sell? So there's two different types of storage fee. Once the item is there, they start charging you a storage fee, but it's very minimal, unless it's a big item, like it's almost negligible. But if you store it there for more than six months, that's when they're gonna start charging you more. It's called a long-term storage fee. You don't want anything there for more than six months. Mm -hmm. Most of our items sell within one to two months. And if it doesn't sell after 60 days, then we reevaluate what we're gonna do with it. So we either clearance it out, meaning we're gonna drop the price to make a sale and not replenish it again and then just close or delete the listing. We can also, before Amazon has this program where you can liquidate it, meaning they will um, sell it to their warehouse, we sell it to them, but I don't, we haven't done that in a while. So another thing you can do is have Amazon dispose of the product. It's like 15 cents per unit. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing you can do is have it return back to you for 50 cents per unit mm -hmm. and return it to the store. Depending on the store's policy, you can return it back or you can sell it on you know, Facebook Marketplace or use it. And one, so. one tip I want to give is make sure you remove the FNSKU label oh, before yeah. you return to the store. <laughs> I, I literally dealt with this this week where we had a product that we bought from Costco and we still had the FNSKU covering the UPC barcode. So I took it to Costco to return it. And the lady at the register keeps on scanning it. And she's like, we don't sell this product. I'm just like, I have the receipt here. And it says that I bought it here. And then she's like, are you sure you bought it from the store? I'm just like, oh. in my mind, I'm like, the F and SKU label is still on there. No wonder it's not coming up for her. I'm like, so then I was like, yeah, yeah, it's from a different store. So yeah, I, took it back. <laughs> I, I grabbed it. I was like, oh my gosh. And I take it home and then, you know, make sure, make sure you peel off that F and SKU label before you return it. Yeah. yeah but that's just a show, <laughs> like even like, Sellers like us, we still have our bumpy days, right? We we're, still we're, we're human, you know, so, you know, we have a pretty good system in place, but, you know, some things fall between the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that also goes to show you that we don't return a whole lot of items, right? So we don't, it's not like we have like a bin full of stuff to return on all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, so going back to kind of the storage fees also is that um, Amazon will calculate storage fees, I think on a monthly basis. And our recent storage fee was, I don't know, something like $80, which sounds high, but it was literally 0% of the money of how much we actually sold on Amazon. Meaning that it's such a small amount that it doesn't even register as like 1% on Amazon's calculations. So, um, you know, so just think about that when you're selling on Amazon, where you, if you're moving stuff fast enough, these storage fees don't even matter to you because there's such a small amount of money in relation to how much you're actually making on the platform, on the marketplace. Okay, we have a couple of questions and these are for you. So Ashley's asking, how do you keep track of receipts and mileage and um, just expenses in general? Yeah, actually this question just came up in the women's sellers group. So uh, personally, I snap receipts using the QuickBooks online app. So we use QuickBooks online to do bookkeeping and accounting. And a part of that is that you can also download a mobile app to your phone and you can actually use a camera to snap the receipt. And uh, it automatically imports it into QuickBooks. It actually does like recognition. It knows the store you bought it from, how much it, it cost you. And then they'll like match it up to the credit card charge. QuickBooks is awesome. I, I love it. It's, some people prefer Zero or FreshBooks. I personally prefer QuickBooks. You know, they all kind of do the same thing. Um, the other way to scan receipts is we have this portable brother printer. The model number is, I believe, ADS 1500. Um, they have different models, but it's very compact. You just put the receipt through there and it scans it. And then you can, after that, you can upload it to, um, uh, to QuickBooks if you want, or just do whatever you want with the digital version of the receipt. Um, and then in terms of tracking mileage, I use a mobile app called Mileage IQ. It's always running in the background of my phone. And as I'm driving, it kind of logs that drive. And then at the end of the drive, it's like, you just drove 20 miles. Was this for personal or business? And if I went to shop at a Target, I'm going to hit business on it, right? And that's, that's another good tip. When you're tracking miles, you can actually be very strategic in terms of where you shop. So for example, if we're going to go to grandma's house for the weekend, and I know there's a Target right next to her, guess what? I'm going to drive to the Target shop there and I can write off those miles, right? Because I am doing business. Uh, it just so happens I'm going to stop by grandma's house later. But the thing is that it's, it's a business trip, 
right? So you can be very strategic when it comes to kind of like tracking your miles. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically the tool of the trade that we use. And Laura's asking on Zoom, if you're selling on Amazon, do we need an LOC or a tax ID number? Yeah, so um, the answer is no, you do not. Especially when you're just starting out and you're just trying to test the water, don't go through the the time and the cost of registering an LLC and getting a tax ID number. It's not that difficult, but if you don't think this is for you, there's no reason to kind of go through all those steps, right? Um, once you have already um, sold a bunch of stuff and you're like, wow, this Amazon thing is amazing. I definitely want to do this as a, as a business. Even if it's just a side hustle or like a part-time business, you will want to go ahead and register that LLC. And what LLC stands for is limited liability company. And all the 50 states in the US will allow you to register an LLC in that state. And what that is, is it creates a entity that is separate from you, right? So when you start selling on Amazon, you're using your social security number, you are selling as a sole proprietor. That's meaning that you are the seller selling under your social security number. If something were to happen and a buyer were to sue you and take you to court because you sold on using your social security number as a sole proprietor, the judge can award damages and they can tap into your personal assets. A limited liability company, you will be able to create it, register your own tax ID number or EIN as the IRS calls it. So now you have a separate legal entity that you can actually register with Amazon and start selling on. And if the same uh, lawsuit scenario were to crop up, the judge can only award the business assets, not your personal assets to the plaintiff. Right. And then um, how to register an LLC, uh, you can go through legal zoom, but I would suggest just going to whatever state you live in and then just Googling, you know, for example, we live in Maryland. I, I'll just Google register Maryland LLC, go to the state website. There's going to be a bunch of companies saying register your Maryland LLC here, you know, but you're going to be ending paying fees to them. Like you would legal zoom, go to the state website, right? It's going to be something, something dot md.gov or texas.gov and register your LLC there directly. And all you're going to do is be paying the fees to the state. You're not going to be paying LegalZoom extra fees and all that junk. So, um, and then the EIN number, just Google registering an EIN number. Again, you're going to go straight to the IRS to get that EIN number. Do not go to LegalZoom or these other services. An EIN number is even easier because it's free. So you just put in there your LLC information, and then within a few minutes, you have a bona fide EIN number, which looks like a social security number. That's so funny. So Marty said, well, going back to your example of when you bought this thing, the, the, you return stuff and mm. the FNSQ label. skews label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She bought a product from Five Below that another seller had returned and had the FNSQ label on it. So actually, I saw that wasn't like at a retail store, but when back when we did thrifting, um, I see it all the time. So we know there's a lot of resellers yeah. around. When you start selling Amazon, you can, you can spot an FNSQ label from a mile away, right? Yeah. Like if you find it at a thrift store or I don't know, maybe like somehow it snuck into the retail store return and went up on the shelf. You're just like, oh, looks like somebody returned this. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lisa asked, do you import products abroad and sell it on Amazon? So Lisa, we don't, um, we used to when we did private label, but we don't do it anymore. But now we buy things that is in retail stores. So we do replen, which is just very similar to retail arbitrage, except we don't have to buy them in clearance or um, discounted price. We usually buy them full price. If it's clearance, you know, if there's a discount, it, it's just gravy on top. But usually we would make profit even if they're full price. So um, we don't do importing anymore. And Jeanette's asking, when tracking miles, do you do round trip? And then Mansi also asked, how do you track miles? So we, Mansi, we, we actually talked about that earlier. Um, what do we use? Mile IQ. Mile so if you IQ. search Mile IQ in the um, Apple App Store oh or God. the Google Play Store. So is it app, right? Yeah, so I, I, can, I can find out the link for it. I'll get it real quick. And we do do round trip? Yes, yeah. so, so, so round trip because you're driving to Target to buying it and then you're going coming home. That is completely allowable by the IRS in terms of um, tracking your miles. Awesome. So I, I linked it in on Facebook as well. Okay. All right, guys, so we are hitting the top of the hour. Um, this has been really good. We have a lot of people on Zoom. Um, I'm sure people will be watching this on Facebook later on as well. Again, I'll post the 
replay on Facebook and I'll email you guys the uh, link to watch it on YouTube if you signed up with Zoom, because I know some people just actually joined. I'm so sorry that we're ending it, um, but we try to keep it to an hour if we can, because we actually have to go pick up our kids now. <laughs> and um, I love doing these sessions with you guys because I get to meet new faces and also people who just been keep, keep coming back, like Marty, Jeanette, you guys are amazing. I love y'all. And uh, I just really like doing this. We've been doing this for months after months now. And every single time we do it, there's I always learn something new and I always get to, um, I feel like we're able to help somebody out. Yeah, we and, also see a lot of new faces, which is great, right? Yeah. So I don't know if you guys know, but we're up to 5,000 members in the Women's Yay, Sellers Group. So. 5,100 as of today. <laughs> oh, 5,100, wow. We're, yeah. We're growing by leaps and bounds. That's awesome. So yeah, get the word out there. Invite all your friends that are interested. Um, yeah, we have we have almost forty people on the uh, live today. So oh yeah. Uh, so Combined. we so we recently moved from three p.m. to five p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the last two weeks, uh, this week included, we moved to five p.m. And I think we probably had the most viewers that, or most participants mm -hmm. that we've had since, right? So yeah. So I think you guys are liking this time. So we'll keep it at five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, Gigi said, if you're not on Clubhouse, you should be, it's a great place. Yeah, we are on, on Clubhouse and I, I did started it, but we didn't have anybody joining. So I just kind of ended it early, but we are on Clubhouse. If you guys uh, don't know what it is, it's just an app, an audio app that allows you to connect with other people. There's lots of, a lot of celebrities on there, but right now it's only by invite. So you can only get there if some, get on there if somebody invite you to join. Um, hopefully later on they'll roll it out to everybody, but it's only for iPhone users. So um, I know, I'm sure they're working on Android as oh, well. Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. It, so I think Clubhouse has been around for a while. It just kind of took off, it went viral. Yeah. And it caught the, the, the company by surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, okay, so I think we're gonna end it here. Um, have a great weekend, you guys. And also happy Easter. So we'll see you guys back here next week, same time and same day. So right. that's it. Bye, Bye, -bye. guys. Take care.